Welcome back everyone, Dustin here again, Average Guy Hi-Fi. I've got another uh, video for you guys for some speakers that I ended up picking up, oh, I don't know, probably about a month ago now. So these right here is probably a brand that you've never heard of. Uh, some of you have, I'm not saying they're totally unheard of. Uh, usually they, uh, this brand kind of sticks to custom home theater installations. Um, and nowadays they kind of focus on in-wall stuff, but kind of similar to Triad, those Triad speakers that I had. So it's not a huge like Klipsch, Martin Logan, definitive technology, but what this is right here, this is an episode model ESHT 900 LCR6. That's a mouthful. That's a crazy, <laughs> a crazy name. Again, I like it when speaker manufacturers are more, I'm sure it means a bunch of stuff, but uh, for the consumer, it's really hard to remember, especially if somebody on the forums asks you, hey, what kind of speakers you're using? And then you got to ramble on with that. But um, these speakers right here are, they call it, it can be called a bookshelf speaker, I would say, but I think the true definition um, and the, the kind of the reviews and the stuff that I read, these are actually monitors. So I actually pulled up this clip R5100M, just to give you guys an idea of size comparison. Um, just to, I mean, this is a, this is the five inch uh, Klipsch woofer. So this isn't a small speaker by any, by any means, but um, these episodes are, um, they're about 12 and a half inches wide. They're about eight, 18 inches tall. And the big thing is, is just look how deep they are. Again, if you kind of look at them compared to how, um, how deep the Klipsch speaker is. I mean, they're not even, not even close. <laughs> so these things just tower over a normal bookshelf speaker. But what these are very similar to in size, and the reason that I like them, because I kind of got a weird brain, is um, the Klipsch Ultra, Ultra 2 uh, THX 650 uh, monitors that I have. I have three of those in storage. So eventually, very similar layout, like the um, the shape of them, the way that the there's dual six and a half inch woofers, these use a, a paper Kevlar woofer. Um, versus the Klipsch woofers, which are uh, aluminum, I believe. And this also uses a, um, it uses a uh, ribbon tweeter. So I know people kind of go back and forth with what, do, do I like dome tweeters? Do I like ribbon tweeters? Should they be aluminum? Uh, to be honest, I'm kind of leaning more towards the ribbon camp these days. There used to be reliability issues. People would turn them up too loud. They would fry the ribbons. I've had speakers like that that I got really cheap that I had to replace the ribbons on. Um, but what, from what I'm understanding, modern technology, modern ribbons are uh, much more durable. But I just love the... Uh, they're very intricate. That would be the best way I would describe them. I mean, the details and everything that these speakers produce... It's a little bit less in your face, like the Klipsch horns are on those uh, Ultra 2s, but uh, I like both speakers, so it's really going to be a fun comparison when I get them side by side. Uh, it probably won't happen for a while. Those things are buried in storage. That's for my future uh, home theater room, if I ever get, get enough money to uh, get one of those going. Um, that's probably what will go in there, but I'm going to give these a shot too. Again, these speakers are replacing my um, beloved Definitive Technology Mythos Super Towers. If that tells you guys anything, if you watch my review on those, you know how much I love those. Those are $4,000 speakers. So I'll kind of give you some stats on these. Um, actually, one unique feature for these speakers is that the they're, they're basically, I love it when the front stage of a home theater has all matching speakers. I mean, it's a compromise to get a center channel that is has less box volume uh, than say the towers or the bookshelf speakers that across the front. So when I show you guys these in action over there, um, you'll see these are all just uh, same speakers across the front stage, which is the best way to kind of get the um, best performance out of your uh, home theater. So keep that in mind. But um, with that said, this right here, uh, one of the features of these speakers are is that you can take the tweeter and you can swap it out to where the, uh, the, uh, the port is. So you would just take the tweeter, take the port out, rotate it so the tweeter's horizontal if you wanted this to be a vertical center, um, and then put the uh, port over there. So then they would all kind of um, line up across the front. I actually just have it so the center channel has the tweeter on top. So I just kind of turn the center channel on its side. And then the bookshelves I have in opposite directions on each side. But again, I'll show you all that over there. So another thing that kind of makes these speakers unique is they do have a, a boundary compensation off and on switch, and then also a screen EQ. Mainly these speakers are, again, were designed um, by episode for dedicated home theaters. So 
I'm one of the weirdos out there that kind of likes uh, my speakers with the grills off and I don't have a dedicated theater so I can't hide them behind a screen. So it just gives you a couple EQ switches that you can fine tune the, um, fine -tune the speakers depending on how you have them placed in your room. So um, what they say is the sensitivity on these speakers is 90 dB so they're nice and efficient. That Marantz receiver um, is not a powerhouse. I wouldn't call it like a beastly uh, re amplifier out there. I've had some 300 watts of channel amplifier. That one, um, this is a 4 ohm speaker so the impedance on the speaker is 4 ohm. So that, that Marantz actually does a pretty good job powering these just fine even though that Marantz isn't 4 ohm rated which is in the review that I said that was one of my concerns but has no problem driving these to high enough volumes to where I don't want to be in the room anymore so uh, that's plenty so um, other uh, it's a they recommend about 190 watts power handling um, for these speakers so they they can take a good amount of clean power the frequency response is uh, 47 Hertz to 20 kilohertz um, so nice wide uh, frequency response. I would recommend the base. I'm going to run these over there for you guys without the subwoofers. I got some cool subwoofers that I'm testing out right now too, but I'm going to run them over there um, without the subwoofers just so you guys can see. These actually have a really nice impactful uh, base and a lot of that comes down just to the size of the cabinet. Uh, like I said, this thing is no joke when it comes to how big, how big this thing is. I mean, you look at my hand. I'm not a small guy. I'm not a huge guy either, but uh, these things are pretty, pretty good size. And that's just the same, roughly, it's about the same size as those uh, clip speakers, but these are just much deeper than the clip speakers are. So I think they look great in my room, but I'm single, you know, I don't know how many people can pull this off if you're married or have a girlfriend or if you're the girl and you love, you're the home audio and your husband doesn't like it. I don't know how many people can pull this off with having these type of speakers in their living room, but luckily I can. So let's go over there. I'll put on the movie uh, Thor Ragnarok. Again, that's just one of my favorite Marvel movies that's out there. I'll play the... Uh, the Thor Hulk scene. It just has really good impactful bass, cool visuals and everything too. And then a lot of people have been asking me how I've been mounting my center channels above the TV. So I'll just show you. I don't recommend it for people with kids and things like that because it's not really stable. Uh, it's stable, but I, if a kid gets behind the TV and pushes on it, but right now I'm just using two speaker stands, really high quality, heavy duty speaker stands behind my uh, LG OLED TV. And then I have a piece of glass up top and then some pads on top of the TV. And I basically just have the glass angled just slightly down towards the main listening position. Nice and sturdy, it would hold. I actually tested out with a ton of weight just to make sure it's gonna be fine. So um, just, I wanted to show you guys that. So I'll show you that over there with the gimbal. So uh, let's go over there and I'll show you guys Thor Ragnarok and then we'll pop back over here and I'll give you guys the average guy hi-fi um, rating. Just a spoiler alert, these rated very high on my list, and that's why they're replacing the Definitive Technology uh, Super Towers. Uh, so here we go. Let's go check these things out. Okay, we got them all set up and everything. Um, the microphone sounds a little bit funny because I'm putting it in the main listening position uh, in my room, so I'm a little bit far away from it when I'm recording this. But anyway, here's how they look in my room. Again, I'm, I just love the looks of these things. I know that that's going to be probably an unpopular opinion, but... Um, feel free to leave me uh, what you guys think of this setup. I think it just kind of visually, I just like the way it, it kind of forms together. Most people can't pull this type of stuff off, but I can. So here we go. This is the uh, Thor Ragnarok uh, Hulk Thor fight. So um, I turn the subwoofers off. You'll see right here, this is kind of some subwoofers that I'm getting ready to uh, review here. I've got two of them, one on that side and one over that side over there. Some more Sunfire subwoofers. So. That review probably will be going up uh, next in the next week or two. I've got, just got a ton of gear to review for you guys, so kind of put in the queue there. But here we go. Uh, to try not to keep these videos too long here, here's the uh, Hulk Thor fight scene from Thor Ragnarok in 4K on the LG uh, OLED C9 65-inch TV with that Panasonic uh, 80, 820 Blu-ray player that I reviewed for you guys not too long ago. Here we go.
Was? Hey, big guy. The sun's getting real low. Hope you guys enjoyed that video of Thor Ragnarok. Uh, it's just a visually and the sound, that movie is fantastic. It's a great way to kind of show off your system to friends or it's just a really good uh, system to kind of test your system for yourself. So I would advise picking that one up. That's definitely worth owning in the collection there. So. Um, something that I failed to mention in the earlier part of the video, which is an important part of this channel, it's in the description so you guys know already, but I failed to mention what the MSRP pricing was of these speakers. So I actually read a few different uh, resources and talked to a couple different people that had different opinions on this. Uh, one person thought they were $1,100 MSRP and there's another person that thought they were $800 MSRP. So I just decided to say $900 uh, MSRP a piece for these speakers. So. Um, just to clear things up a little bit. I know that's an important part of the information you guys are trying to get out of this channel. And that's what I want to provide you with. So now we're on to the average guy hi-fi section, uh, the score of the video. So basically there's four categories. We go off quality, we go off sound, we go off the um, MSRP, we go off the aesthetics, and then we also go off my price paid. And then we average those out. Each category is worth 10 points, 10 being the best. Um, average those out, and then I give you guys an average guy hi-fi score. So jump right into it. Quality, nine and a half out of 10. The, what they were able to accomplish for that not roughly $900 a piece MSRP was pretty pretty amazing. Having the boundary compensation switches, the screen EQ switches, um, having this large, a one inch by four inch ribbon tweeter, two um, six and a half inch Kevlar paper cones, um, and a nice big cabinet, you know, nice bass response and everything out of this cabinet. Uh, what they were able to accomplish uh, when it comes to the quality is just amazing. So I gave them a nine and a half out of 10 when it came to comes to quality. They're not going to win any beauty contests, obviously. Uh, it depends on who you are. I love the look of them, but I'm imagining most people these things won't appeal to you so that you'd probably want something uh, maybe a little bit more um, of the quality aspect was focused on the cabinetry of it, making it a little bit more home friendly. But single guy, I can get away with putting these large things in, a, in my front stage there. So jump onto sound again, nine and a half out of 10. To replace those definitive technology Mythos ST Super Towers, they need, it, they need to be very high quality sound. This ribbon tweeter is detailed. Uh, the, sound, the, the, the sound stage of these three speakers across the front, it's some of the most um, home theater or movie-like theater experience in my place that I've had. Just it, The sound just sounds like it's a whole wall of sound. And then I would recommend having a subwoofers with these though, crossing them over. Uh, these aren't gonna be bass freaks or anything. So um, the way that I had them set up out there, um, I just ran them at full range. That's so you guys can see the woofers. But typically I have those, um, I would run these with subwoofers, cross them over around that 60 to 80 Hertz range, and then let the subwoofers do the heavy lifting, free up some of the power of these things to just focus on the dynamics. And that's really where they shine. Nine and a half out of 10 when it comes to sound. Just I love it. I think they sound very, very nice. And I can't wait to test these out against my uh, Klipsch Ultra 2 650s because they're a very similar speaker. That'll be a fun one. Um, the MSRP pricing, anywhere around that $1,100 to $800 range. Uh, just very impressed with what episode was able to pull off with the features, the sound, the size of the cabinets, the quality of the components. Um, nine out of 10 when it comes to the MSRP pricing. The aesthetics, like sound, this is the one of the most uh, subjective of the categories here, but I love the looks of these. 
I think that they have a very industrial look, and I kind of like that type of stuff, especially mixed with the modern. Um, the ribbon tweeters, I like the I like the looks of the woofers. I like the cabinet size. I just like the visual of having three matching speakers across the front, even if the center channel is just turned on its side. I just like that look. And I, you know, everybody thinks subjective out there, and I don't know if you guys might hate the looks of these, but I happen to like them. So eight and a half out of ten when it comes to the looks. Uh, my price paid eight and a half out of ten. Just another great score, not the best score, uh, but picking these quality speakers up for the sound they produce, all three of them for seven hundred dollars, just it's just an amazing deal. I gave an eight and a half, eight and a half out of ten when it comes to my price paid. I could have rated them a little bit higher, but. I'm trying to use as much as the scale as possible. And I've had some amazing deals as you guys have seen. That's a whole purpose of this channel is just to educate the beginners out there, give you some advice, point out brands like this that aren't super well known that you can just get killer deals on. And you'll be able to compete with systems costing three, four or five times what you paid for stuff. And that's really what I want to do. Help you guys out there, get you the best sound possible. Ask me advice, all of that type of stuff. Eight and a half out of 10, my price paid. The reason it didn't rate higher is because I've had deals like Klipsch RC64 for $50 about eight years ago. I've got um, Definitive Technology BP2001s for $500, I think. There's all kinds of deals that I've had. So just really, really good deals in audio gear. So this stacks up still towards the higher end of the range, just not the best out there. So um, what's that all average out to? It averages out to 45 out of 50, which is a 90% on the average guy hi-fi score. These are some of the highest rated speakers I've um, I've uh, reviewed for you guys, and obviously they're, they're sticking around. Generally, I will review the speakers, I will list them for sale, and then I'm on to the next. But these replace the definitives, and now these are going to be the mainstays. Um, and eventually, when I can compare them side by side with those Clip 650s, then I'll sell whichever ones don't win, and that system will end up going in my dedicated theater, theater if I can ever afford one of those. So. If this is the type of stuff you're into, um, saving money on the audio market, uh, open box deals, I buy new stuff, I buy used stuff, I give you guys my just honest impressions. I'm using my money to purchase this stuff so there's no outside influences on me. I would still be open to test gear for um, speaker manufacturers, but I would just be honest. Be like, hey, they mailed me these. These are my opinions of them. So. Um, yeah, I'm not quite that big yet, obviously, but maybe one of these days. The, cor the growth has just been amazing. I'm, I'm definitely on the fast track. 725 subscribers, I think, by the time I'm recording this video, which is just phenomenal for three months, roughly three months of me doing this. So thank you guys again for the su support. Um, if you're into this type of stuff, saving money, used audio, I'm going to try to document it all. <laughs> Any, anytime a good deal pops up, I'm trying to buy it on my my free time. Work's been really busy right now, so I'm doing these type of videos at night, but I'm having a blast doing it, and I hope you guys are having a blast watching. Again, my name is Dustin. name of the channel is Average Guy Hi-Fi. I'd love to have you as a subscriber if this is some, something that you're into. Thank you again.